according to your wish. According to your wish. My life is not my own. My life is not my own. Yo, I'm here with my Lovely wife Alice. Hi everyone. And my brother in the Lord, Tim Phoenix. We're at Tim's house in Saddleworth, England. Hello there. And we're getting ready for the 21st part of our study in the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, a, a blessed study, if I must say so myself, because it is indeed it's the Word of excellent. God. Excellent. Uh, last week we talked about forgiveness. That was kind of the primary topic of our study last week. We're in the Sermon on the Mount looking at Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7. Uh, we were in chapter 6 last week, but if you missed that, I really strongly suggest that you go and watch it. It's available online, as all of this study is, at BibleTalk.com, because it was really, really a powerful message from God about how to change our lives with forgiveness. And before we start this week, and we'll be starting this week... Um, in Matthew chapter 6, verses 16 through 18, I'm going to ask Tim once again just to give us a, a little prayer and ask God's presence and blessing on our time together. Dear Lord God, we know that when two or three are gathered together, you are always with us, and we feel your presence today. Please be with us all throughout the Bible study and throughout the day. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Alrighty. As I said, we're in Matthew chapter 6, and I'm going to start at verse 16. Jesus said, Whenever you fast, do not put on a gloomy face as the hypocrites do, for they neglect their appearance so that they will be noticed by men when they are fasting. Truly I say to you, they have their reward in full. But you, when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face so that your fasting will not be noticed by men. But your Father who is in secret and your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Well, let's, let's first of all just talk briefly about the purpose of fasting. And, and by the way, I, I will talk, because they're going to remind me, if mm -hmm. I tend to forget, okay. about the connection. As I've been saying since we started this study months and months ago, that most of the time you see things from the Sermon on the Mount, you see a verse here and a verse here yeah. and teachings on verses. But we want to make sure that we're seeing the entire picture. This is Jesus training his disciples, his apostles, in walking in righteousness. Why do you fast? Well, let me give you this from Galatians. Paul's letter to the Galatians 5.17. He said, For the flesh sets its desire against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. For these are in opposition to one another, so that you may not do the things that you please. There is constant conflict between our spirit and our flesh. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right? Now, fasting has everything to do with this. Paul also wrote in his letter to the Romans, and I'm going to read from Romans chapter 8, verses 4 through 8, so that the requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who are according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who are according to the spirit the things of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. For the mind set on the flesh is death, but the mind set on the Spirit is life and peace. Because the mind set on the flesh is hostile towards God, for it does not subject itself to the law of God, for it is not even able to do so, and those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Fasting is about the Spirit being in control of the flesh. Mm -hmm. Now, before Jesus even started his public ministry, he went out into the wilderness and he fasted for 40 days. Right? The leaders of the church in, in biblical times, in times of decisions, in times of starting others off in ministry, in times where power was especially needed, they prayed and they fasted. And those two things always, they go together very well. Let me put it that way. Prayer and fasting. Yes. All right? Um, Fasting often empowers our prayers. 
-hmm. Okay? Because what fasting is about is about self-denial. Right. Denial and dying to self. Mm -hmm. It's withholding what your flesh desires. I promise you, your flesh desires to eat. Right. That's, mm -hmm. That is one of the basic desires of mankind. Mm -hmm. And so withholding that thing that the body always craves for, it's saying to the, the spirit is saying to the flesh, I'm in charge here, I'm in control, yeah. right? And Jesus said if anybody was going to follow him, they had to deny themselves. You've got to die to yourself. You've got to pick up your cross daily and follow him. Yeah. So fasting has everything to do with this self-denial, mm -hmm. dying to self, showing your spirit, showing your, your flesh, that it is your spirit indeed that is in control. It, it, that self-control is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. Right? Yes. And, you know, Paul wrote to Timothy and said, God hasn't given us a spirit of timidity, of fear, mm -hmm. but of power and boldness. And a sound mind, that's discipline, right? Mm -hmm. So we're supposed to have this, this discipline. We need to be putting our flesh in a place where it doesn't rule what we do in our lives. Mm -hmm. Because it will try. It will constantly, mm. constantly try. It'll always be about trying. And, you know, um, Jesus said when you fast. So there is an assumption here that you will fast. Right. Yes. Okay? An uh, expectation. Yeah. Right. And you do it not to be seen by men, mm -mm. but to be, but for this purpose that God would see what you're doing in your life. But it's more than just food. Because when you get into this process of self-denial, dying to yourself, when you get into this process of your spirit ruling your flesh, mm -hmm. then you're going to understand better what God spoke to the prophet Isaiah, I mean, more, more than 2,700 years ago. So this is not just a New Testament concept, mm -hmm. right? This is from Isaiah 58. I'm going to read verses 4 through 12. Behold, He's talking to the hypocrites here, to the religious people. He mm -hmm. said, you fast for contention and strife and to strike with a wicked fist. You do not fast like you do today to make your ver voice heard on high. Mm -hmm. Now, to make your voice heard on high. There's that prayer thing, the right. connection between mm -hmm. prayer and fasting. That the, one of the reasons that we fast is to make our voice heard on high. Yes. It empowers our prayer life. In verse 5 it says, is it a fast like this which I choose, a day for a man to humble himself? Mm -hmm. Is it for bowing one's head like a reed and for spreading out sackcloth and ashes as a bed? Will you call this a fast, even an acceptable day to the Lord? Is this not the fast which I choose, to loosen the bonds of wickedness, to undo the bands of the yoke, and to let the oppressed go free and break every yoke? Is it not to divide your bread with the hungry, and bring the homeless poor into the house, when you see the naked to cover him, and not to hide yourself from your own flesh. Then your light will break out like the dawn, and your recovery will speedily spring forth, and your righteousness will go before you. The glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Mm -hmm. I, I tell you what, you need a rear guard, because mm -hmm. the devil is always trying to sneak up on you. Yeah. So as he goes about as a, a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. So it's nice to know that the, God, the, the Lord goes before you, but it's also nice to know that when you're doing this, God is your rear guard. He's got you covered. Yeah. Well, there was back. another a, a, a in verse in there, the, on, on, uh, Isaiah, in verse 8, and it says, And your recovery will speedily spring forth. Speedily, yes. So it, it, it also would bring about healing in well, your own life. you know, it, it's, it's interesting, too, that, I mean, there's a lot of knowledge today in the medical field mm -hmm. that they didn't have back then right. other than God's instruction mm -hmm. that fasting can be a very very healthy thing for you right. okay right. but let me read on in verse 9 in, there in Isaiah then you will call and the Lord will answer you will cry and he will say here I am if you remove the yoke from your midst the pointing of the finger and speaking wickedness and if you give yourself to the hungry and satisfy the desire of the afflicted then your light will rise in the darkness, your gloom will become like midday. And the Lord will continually guide you and satisfy your desire in scorched places, give strength to your bones, and you will be like a watered garden and like springs of water whose waters do not fail. Those from among you will rebuild the ancient ruins, you will raise up the age-old foundations, and you will be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of the streets in which to dwell." So can you see, I mean, the connection here through, through fasting? It's a self-denial. Mm -hmm. When you do this, yes. it, it brings 
Because when your flesh is being pushed down mm -hmm. and your spirit is being built up, right. your relationship with the Lord changes. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. All right? And that's, what he's, that's his desire. The desire is not just to see you go hungry. Because, by the way, mm -hmm. I mentioned yeah. Jesus being in the wilderness for 40 days, mm -hmm. being, yeah. right, being tempted by the devil. After fasting for 40 days, after fasting for 40 days, he became hungry. Right. Yeah, mm, not during. Not no. during. And there's, I mean, this is, there can be some amazing things that happen. It's, God's purpose is not to make you hungry. No. His purpose is to satisfy your hunger. Yes. Mm. Because He wants to satisfy your spiritual hunger. Right. I just want to share this little experience because I, I just think this is, is neat. Um, we were in Africa one time and I was fasting for a month. And I, I, okay, I was just fasting for a month. Because I needed, I promise you, I needed that connection with the Lord while we were over there in this place. Yes. And I did the most amazing thing. Mm -hmm. I was never hungry. Mm. I, now, Alice, my lovely sweet patootie Alice will tell you, <laughs> if lunch is a half an hour late, I'm, I'm usually... <laughs> look, look. <laughs> but this, I'm, I'm fasting for a month, and I never felt a pang of hunger. And we're in a culture where people are always trying to feed you. I mean, because they're very, very gracious. Always. And, and f communal meals are very important. They're not important in the West very much anymore because as families, we don't sit around the table and have those family meals. That's right. But places we were in Africa, in Latin America, in a lot of places, that's a very important social function is eating together. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they were being gracious and trying to feed us. So we were always at somebody's table yes. with a lot of food. Mm -hmm. But the most amazing thing was, I would sit at a table in the midst of all these people, and somebody would say, pass the whatever, and I would pass the food, and as it went by me, I'd sniff it. And it was like you and ate. And it was like I ate it. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I literally just felt the aroma. I just, yeah, it was just an, yeah. an amazing, an amazing thing. But I, the only reason I say that is because it's not about hunger. It's about God causing, your, your flesh is always hungry. Mm -hmm. Your flesh is always hungry, and not just for food, for whatever it can get. Mm -hmm. But your spirit, we should have a spiritual hunger for the Lord and the things of the Lord that are only satisfied by fasting. Mm. So just, that's, you know, there's no law here that says, okay, you better, you know, set aside every Tuesday from this to that to, to fast. This is between you and the Lord. Mm. But I, I'm telling you, there's an assumption on the part of Jesus Christ that you will fast. And there's a proper way to do it. Mm -hmm. There's a right reason to do it. And that will cause you to be satisfied, because that's God's I, desire. I just wanted to add that I, I noticed that when I've fasted, there are in the times that I have, my spirit seems more alive and more sharper. I mean, I just feel mm -hmm. more spiritually connected with the Lord. Well, it's, the, an ama yeah. it's an amazing feeling. I mean, it's just it's just so yeah. it's so great. There, there are two things here that I just think are very, very cool. Mm -hmm. Of course, we've talked now a couple of times about Jesus in the wilderness, right? Yes, we have. But Jesus' response to the devil, when the devil tried to tempt him now with food, was mm -hmm. to say, well, man is, quoting scripture, mm -hmm. man does not live by bread alone, but by every yeah. word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Right. So the word of God, I promise you, can satisfy you, That's right. can feed the hunger that you have. Yeah. That's right. and, and this is why, um, you know, I've always said, after my accident, I get a little chubby here, but that's neither here nor there. But Proverbs Chapter 15, mm -hmm. verse 30, mm -hmm. says yeah. this. Bright eyes gladden the heart, and good news puts fat on the bones. Okay. <laughs> so you can, you can get pretty chubby with some of this good news. I'll tell you what. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're going to go from there to verse 19, moving right along here in chapter 6. Back in Matthew. Back, yeah, we're in Matthew chapter 6. All right. Verse 19. Jesus says, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth. Where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, mm. where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in or steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Mm -hmm. Now, mm. I'm, I'm going to wait till we get a little further along here and show you the absolute connection mm -hmm. between these verses okay. between fasting and, and your treasure treasures. and what follows all right okay. first of all let's understand what treasure is okay 
If, if Jesus is talking about storing up your treasure, what is it, treasure? What's treasure? Well, I'm guessing it's a positive relationship with God. Well, okay, but in natural, I mean, you know, the treasure. natural, it's your stuff. Well, oh, yeah. Well, bear in mind that there's an old saying. Mm -hmm. One man's trash is another man's treasure. treasure. Right. Okay. Right. So, so tr treasure is a subjective thing. Okay, so it's your desire. Well, to, to one person, you know, it may be a car. To another person, it may be silver and gold. To, it's the thing that is most important to you in your life. Right. Okay, that's that's yeah, what yeah. treasure right. is. Sure. Because, you know, it's not the thing. It's your relationship with the okay. thing. Yeah. It's, or whatever is dear to your heart. Yeah. Treasure are the things that people most dearly prize. Right. Yes. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. It's a thing that you most dearly prize. You may prize something that has no interest to somebody else. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And thus, one man's trash is another man's treasure. It could be a loved one. It could be anything. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, he, Jesus is saying, don't store those things up on earth. He's not saying don't store them up. But you're supposed to store up your treasure yeah. in heaven. Yes. Okay? Storing up is what you do with things that you have no need for at the moment. Mm -hmm. True. Doesn't mean that you don't have a desire for them. Right. right. But you don't have a, right. you know, yeah. you store things up that you're not going to use right now. Exactly. Yes. Okay. I hope you get this connection. All right. Worship is about giving to God mm -hmm. what is most precious to you. To you. Right. Now yes. remember what I just said. Mm -hmm. A treasure is the thing that you most dearly prize. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Worship is giving the yeah. thing you to most dearly prize to the, to the Lord. Right, yes. Okay? This is really important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Abraham, the first act of worship that's noted in Scripture, is when God called Abraham to take his sacrifice. son, his only yeah. begotten son, sacrifice. Isaac, yeah. up to the mountain and sacrifice him. Mm -hmm. And, and Abraham said to the people who were with him, his servants, he said, My son and I, we will go up the mountain and worship, we and we will return. return. Right? Mm -hmm. So the first act of worship is Abraham giving, giving his son Isaac to the Lord, offering yes. Isaac yeah. to the Lord. Right. He was storing up his treasures in heaven. Yes. Yes. Because Isaac, I promise you, was precious to him. Yes. This mm -hmm. was the son of the promise. Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. Alright? So... That's how you store things up in heaven. You give them to God. You give them to the Lord. Mm. And yeah. it's an act of worship. Mm. And the Lord said, you know, to the woman of the well, time is coming and now is when God will seek, the people he seeks are those who worship in spirit and in truth. Yeah. And our worship is about storing up our treasures in heaven. Yes. Taking those things that are most precious to us. Now you want to know something? If you got a Cadillac, you can't get that to heaven no. anywhere. No, I mean, no. no matter what kind of mileage it gets, no matter how mm -hmm. fast it gets, no matter goes, how many, it ain't getting there. Might, Not yeah. going to make it well, because if, if the thieves don't get to it, the rust will. That's what Jesus said. Yes. Right. Sooner or later, those things that you treasure here on earth mm -hmm. are going to disappear. That's the nature of those things. Yeah. But if you store them up, if you're trying to store them here on earth, you know, you're you're putting them aside. One of the other reasons that people put them aside is because it's kind of insurance. Yeah. You know, you, you really, this is precious to you because you also see that it has the ability to do something for you in the future. Right. But before I do that, I just want to talk about this again. Talking about your treasures and the things that are precious to you, mm -hmm. all right? Because I think one of the greatest examples in Scripture is this, all right? This is from Paul's letter to the Philippians. I'm going to read from chapter 3. Paul says... Whatever things were gained to me, those things I have counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Mm -hmm. More than that, I count all things to be lost in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them but rubbish, so that I may gain Christ and may be found in Him, not having a righteousness of my own derived from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which comes from God on the basis of faith. Mm -hmm. There were things that were precious to Paul. Yes. He was a Pharisee of the Pharisees. He treasured the law. Yeah. But now what he's done is he surrendered all of that. Would and you also say that these are things that you, you would put your trust in? You, you always 
to some degree, all right, you always put your trust in your treasures. I mean, this is why, you know, I mean, you associate the word, forget, uh, I can't say that because I'll get myself in trouble. <laughs> Think not for the moment of Scripture. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Think of uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, Caribbean, yeah. Yeah. right? You know, there's always this hidden treasure, the buried treasure. Yes. Right, right. Treasure is the most precious thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you guard it. Right. You, know, you right. safeguard it, with whatever you can do. Jesus is saying, if you want, that, that's what storage is. Mm -hmm. It's like mm -hmm. finding that place where you can put it aside and it's safe. safe. You yes. know, find you a vault yeah. yes. where you can put your treasures where it's nice and safe. And what he's saying is, the the way to have the fullness of life and righteousness is to take that thing that is your treasure and give it to the Lord. Right. And yeah. trust it to Makes the Lord. Sense. But here's what's silly about what I just said. When I say entrust it to the Lord, anything that you have that is indeed a treasure that you give to yeah. God, guess where it came from? It came from it God. It already belongs oh, to Him. Yeah. And it already belongs to Him because the earth is the Lord's in the fullness thereof. Yes. And it's like when you get this, when you get attitude. this mindset, when you get this attitude mm -hmm. yeah. that everything belongs to the Lord, and it's not yours to begin with, then it's very easy to give it back to the Lord yeah. and know that He's entrusted you with it. Yeah. Isaac did not belong to Abraham. No. Isaac belonged to God. Yes. Yeah. But God had entrusted Isaac unto Abraham. Yes. Where do you get the power to do this kind of stuff? Fasting has to do with self-denial. Right. Mm -hmm. There's a connection. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, mm -hmm. the fasting the fasting gives you the power, power to, be able to, to start to live this kind of spiritual right. life where all of a sudden these things were so important. Because the fact of the matter is, you can have all of the treasures of the world, but go without food for a few days mm -hmm. and see which becomes more important to you. Yeah. See how yeah. much of your treasure you would give to get a little food. Mm. So when you start to fast and get rid of that which is the most important, mm -hmm. it gives you the power then to start releasing because you're dominating your flesh, your spirit's dominating your flesh, and you get to that place. Mm -hmm. where you can start being obedient to God and taking those things that you think are precious to you and saying, here, Lord, yeah. give it to Him. Give it to Him. Because you can trust in Him. And it's always about trusting in Him. Amen. I want to talk about this, too, because it's interesting. In the United States, you know, we're here in England now, but in the States, we've seen as we travel around, one of the biggest booming businesses, and there are not many booming businesses in the United States mm -hmm. of America. Not anymore. But one booming business is storage. Yes, yes. Yes. Everywhere you go, they're building these storage facilities. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, you have to wonder, what's going on here? Uh -huh. It's an accumulation going Well, on. there's been an accumulation mm -hmm. of so much stuff that people just don't, you know, have room for it, or, you know, they're moving out of their homes and, mm -hmm. you know, just trying to store it up. There are over two and a half, I just thought you'd be interested in this, right? This is as, uh, just a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. there were more than two and a half billion square feet of storage mm. space in the United States of America. I mean, that's, that's nuts. Yes, yeah. it so is. It is. But wow. it's like, one of the things that we do, we have a tendency to do, is we take these things that we treasure, and one of the reasons that we treasure them is because of what we perceive as their importance in our life. Mm -hmm. Yes. I, a lot of people, I mean, their treasure is just very simply money. Yes. Mm. Whether it's silver and gold or cash in the bank or what, yeah. what have you. Yeah. One of the reasons they treasure it and store it up, again, let me go back to what I said in the beginning. You store up what you don't have need of right this moment. Right. Yeah. Okay? So your perception is, well, I may have need of it in the future. Right. Yep. Or it will take care of me in the future. Right. All right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That brings me to this. Okay. Which is truly, truly radical. Mm -hmm. If you know the story in Acts chapter 27, mm -hmm. when Paul was imprisoned by the Romans, he had made an appeal to Caesar, and now he's yeah. being transported from Judea to Rome mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. face Caesar. Right. Yes. And he's on board a ship. It's in Acts 27. You really, if you're not familiar with this, it would be really worth your while to take a little time mm -hmm. and read this. And this storm arises. Not a little storm. A gigantic storm arises. Yeah. Yes. That is literally tearing apart this ship. And where right. people are yeah. abandoning all hope. First they throw over the cargo. Then they start throwing over the, the rigging for the ship, mm -hmm. which gives them control over the ship. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then they start, and at one point, the sailors, because basically what you have on here is cargo, 
Mm -hmm. Roman soldiers, prisoners, and a few sailors. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right? And the sailors, in the midst of the storm, because it is, they've given up all hope, they have the ship's boat. Yes. Well, the ship's boat is a lifeboat. Yeah. yeah. You know, mm -hmm. Alice and I, we, we came over to England this time by ship. We, we've done a, a fair number of times on ships. Mm -hmm. And one of the things you always do are lifeboat Boat drills. drills. That's yeah, yeah. Right. Even yeah. In, when I was in the Navy, I, you know, I was out on carriers, I flew. They, they always had lifeboat drills. This is very, very mm -hmm. important. Mm -hmm. Because those lifeboats are precious. Yes. Yeah. You know, we were right. talking about the Titanic the other day, the fact that when it went out, it didn't have enough lifeboats. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So as Paul is making this trip, the sailors put the ship's boat over, mm -hmm. and they're making plans to escape, to mm -hmm. get away. Mm -hmm. And Paul says to them, because he's received a word from God, he speaks to the Roman centurion in charge of us. He said, if they leave in the lifeboats, Everybody's everybody dead. dies. That's right. Mm. So they had to cut away the lifeboats. Right. Their route of, ex of escape. Well. They thought. But, the, you know, um, there's a lot of things on board ship. If you had to say, okay, you know, the danger is there. What are we going to get rid of? Let's get rid of the band. Let's get rid of uh, the, the, you know, the extra cafe. Let's get rid. Of, mm -hmm. One of the things you don't want to get rid of. The last thing you want to get rid of is the lifeboats. Right. It is. Why? Because you treasure the lifeboats. Right. Because they yeah. offer you security. Salvation. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. And here's God saying, "Cut them away. No lifeboats." Yes. Yeah. yeah. This is, yeah. Well, it's the most. I think it's one of the most That's radical right. passages in, in Scripture, mm -hmm. because you know it says that the righteous shall live by faith. When I talked about garbage and stuff from here from Paul, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's what he talked about. His faith was in his his faith in God is what brought him righteousness. Right. Yeah. Well, it says that faith is the assurance of things hoped for, not seen. Right? right. Our faith in God is supposed to be absolute. Yeah. Yes, it your is. Total so, trust. What's happening is when we treasure up things and store them here on earth. Are we not, as Christians, saying, well, just in case God, God doesn't fails. come through? Yes, we are. There's no argument, is there? Planning for God to fail. We're planning for God to fail. Yeah, yeah. Now, that's a radical thing, yes, and I is. appreciate the fact of how radical that yes, is. is. But that's not, the question is not whether it's radical or not. The question is, is it true or not? Yes, yes, mm. yes. The God is saying, it if, is I, don't, true. if no I don't do it, yeah. it doesn't get done. That's right. You yeah. have to place all of your trust in me. Yeah. Because you want to know at the end of the day, He is supposed to be our treasure. Amen. Yes. Amen. He and He alone is supposed to be our treasure. So when we get to this place where we say, okay, I'm not going to put my trust in this thing or that thing. I'm going to put my trust in the Lord. Then you want to know something? You're able to get rid of it, this thing or that thing. Mm -hmm. And one of the nice things is if your treasure was cash in the bank or something, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now you're able to go back to that fast where you're able to be able to reach out and help other people. Right. Yeah. Supply the food, supply the, you know, the, all these things. Because we're not, we're not clinging to these things to save us. Because we yes. know we're, yeah. we're taken care of. We're so do you see the connection now between yeah. the fasting and, and the this? Well, it gets and better yet, I'm telling you, and the this. <laughs> because the this is the next verses. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Starting in verse 22 of Matthew 6. Okay. 22. Yep. The eye is the lamp of the body. So then, if your eye is clear, your whole body will be full of light. Yeah. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. Mm -hmm. If then the light that is in you is darkness, how great is the darkness. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the King James translates part of that, I think, far better than any of the other translations I know of. It says, in, I'm reading from the New American Standard, by the way, it says, if your eye is clear, right? Mm -hmm. The King James says, if your eye is single. Oh. But that's exactly what it says yeah, right. in Greek. And, you know, it's... Why is it the eye of the tiger? Well, here's the thing, I mean, yeah, what's a, you know, it says if your eye is single. And I, I think... That's a, that's a far better translation, but it's not as easily understood right, as such. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, what does it mean to have a single eye? Well, think about being single-minded. Yeah, focus, I was thinking that. Right? Mm -hmm. It's about focus. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we're, we always, you don't have two brains, mm -hmm. but we use the term single-minded all the time. Mm -hmm. we so do. so mm -hmm. the same thing goes with your eyes. To, to, to have your eye single yeah. means, well, let me do this. 
One of the most obvious and disconcerting yes. problems with eyes that there is yeah. is cross-eyed. Okay. Now, I'm not saying it's the worst disease or worst no. deformity, but it's probably the most uncomfortable to be around. I'm sure. Yeah, it is. Right? Yeah, if yeah. you look at somebody's cross-eyed. Yes, it is. I mean, you know, weird. by the way, if, if, eye look yes, I, I'm sure that you know that I'm not saying this to speak of cross-eyed people, but if yeah. you are, pray to God, who is the healer of us all. Because the point is, if you're sitting there talking to somebody, and they have one eye looking at you, and the other eye looking over in that direction, you really don't know where they're looking. Right. Yeah. And it's very troubling. It's yes. very disconcerting. Yes. Right. right. It is. Mm. Well, then, what do you think Christians are when they're a, a pagan or an unsaved person is talking to a Christian and that Christian has one eye set on Jesus Christ and yeah, one eye set, set on the latest fashions of the world? Things yes. of the world. Because when it comes to this, you cannot be more cross-eyed mm. than to be spiritually cross-eyed right. because the yeah. spirit and the flesh, nothing is farther apart. That's right. Yes. That's right. I can see where the connection fasting comes in. <laughs> <laughs> It all works together, yes, it does. doesn't it? And this is about where your treasures are. Yes. Mm. Because if, you're if the Lord is your treasure, and you are called, as you are, it says it in the letters of Hebrew in the 12th chapter, to fix your eyes on Jesus Christ, the author, the finisher, the perfecter of your faith. Yes. If, you have, if he's your desire, and you have your eye fixed on him, and he is your treasure, so now you can, fix mm. your, you can store up your treasure and fix your eye on your treasure, Guess what? Both your eyes are mm -hmm. looking at the same thing. They'll be mm -hmm. focused. But if you're trying as a Christian to fix your eye on Jesus Christ, and at the same time you're treasuring this thing or that thing of the world, mm. you're cross-eyed. Cross mm. Yes. There's a great song. I, I mentioned, wrote this down. It was written in 1920 by Helen Howarth Lemel. All right? Originally this hymn was entitled the heavenly vision. Mm -hmm. Millions of people today would recognize it instantly as something else. Right. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Yes. It's just a, such a gorgeous, gorgeous hymn, but such a gorgeous sentiment that when you turn your eyes on Jesus, the things of the world just grow dim. Yes. They no longer, you no longer treasure them. They're no, yes, it's nice that they're there when you need them, but you don't, they're not your treasure. They're just your tools. Mm -hmm. They're just the things that are there when you need them. Yes. They lose their importance. Right? When Alice and I lived uh, years ago, we lived in Central America, in, in Latin Belize. America, in Belize. We used to be British Honduras. And we went down there. We didn't have much. And I, I don't say this to be mean about Belize or anything, but I used to say they practiced communism by theft mm. because everybody steals everything from everybody. I mean, it was just a, a lot of petty theft going on. Right. Uh, I'm a lot more gracious today than then, so today I say, well, they were just practicing what the early church did, holding all things in common, <laughs> just not voluntarily. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> okay. Yeah. So... We had everything we owned, which was not very much. I mean, basically everything we owned while we were down there, stolen. Which was not uncommon. I mean, they weren't picking on us. It was just the way of things down there. But I used to say to people, why, why are you stealing my garbage when I came here to bring you a treasure? treasure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? It's just, it depends on what's important to you. It depends mm -hmm. on what you treasure. I, just, I have to share this because I think it's just funny. Uh, I've had a lot of experience because I love sharing the gospel out on the streets with people. I just mm -hmm. love to talk about Jesus. But we had had much of our stuff stolen. We had gone down there and the school that we had started and run in Florida before we went to, to Latin America was called the Oak Valley Christian Academy. And we had t-shirts with that with logo yeah. and, mm -hmm. and we had taken some down to Central America with us. Mm -hmm. And after a while, we walked through town, we saw all these people. Well, <laughs> since you, I don't remember them being part of our school, but they're walking around with our t-shirts. But the funniest part was I was sharing the gospel with a young man one day. I just, you know, I got into a conversation on the street, and I'm talking to him, and I'm talking to him about Jesus. And I look down, and I realize, it dawns on me, 
He's wearing my pants. <laughs> my pants that have been stolen, this guy is wearing. So I was having a dual conversation. I'm talking to him about the love of Jesus Christ, and I'm saying to the Lord, Lord, do you see this guy? You see, those are my pants, those are my pants. So I don't know what he learned that day, but I know what I learned. Give it all up. All right. So we need to, we need to fix our eyes on Jesus Christ. We need to be single-minded. You know, the Psalms, it says, Unite my heart to fear thy name. Mm -hmm. God made man in his image. The highest command, Jesus was asked this, and it is a, a great tenet of the Jewish faith today. It's called the Shema. Mm -hmm. Man came and said, what's the highest command? And he said, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And then goes on to say, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart. Okay. But the point is that God is one. Mm -hmm. He made man to be in his image. Yeah. We have to be one. We, we can't be schizophrenic. Mm -hmm. We can't be two people. We can't be, you know, the fleshly person and the spiritual, spiritual person. Mm -hmm. yeah. We have to be the spiritual person that dominates that, that flesh. Gosh. We have to be that spiritual person. We have to have a heart united to fear God's name. Mm -hmm. We have to be single-minded in our focus on Jesus Christ. And we have to have a single eye that is fixed on the Lord. Yeah. And I know that's hard, but this is, I, you know, I'm, I'm still in the process of writing a book about the schemes, the wiles of the devil. Mm -hmm. uh, and I said there are three great tricks, tactics of the devil to hurt the, the church. Come against mm -hmm. the church. Yeah. To come against the church. And the first one is division. Yes. The second one is distraction. Yes. And the third one is to disarm us, to take away the power yeah. that we have in the Word of God. But distraction is certainly one of the big tools of the devil. Mm -hmm. And he is always trying to get That's us to right. take our eyes off of Jesus oh, and put him on. Sense. And what's he got? He's got what are the world's treasures. Mm -hmm. For it says in the New Testament that this present world is in the power of the evil one. Mm. Back when Jesus was fasting, back when he was mm. tempted in the wilderness by the devil, the devil what did he do? He prayed to God. Took him out, he took him to a high place and showed him all of the glories, all of the, the treasures of the world. I'll give it all to you. I'll give it all to you. The, the point is, there's nothing new under the sun, and the devil's too stupid to come up with anything new. Mm -hmm. So he's still doing the same thing, mm -hmm. is trying to put the treasures of the world before the people of God, and saying, if you just bow down and worship me, you mm -hmm. can have this. But we're only to worship God. That's and right. worshiping God it's is giving to Him yeah. that thing that is most precious to yes. you, your yes. treasure. Yes. Where do you get the strength to do that? Well, try fasting. Mm -hmm. That's right. You see the connection between mm -hmm. all of these? It's not, mm -hmm. you know, it's not just, okay, a couple of verses here and a couple of verses there and a couple of verses. This is Jesus Christ teaching His people how to walk and live in righteousness. Yeah. And it's all a part of the same thing. All right? So, fasting, okay. When, what now? Fasting? When you fast? I'm sorry. I was just thinking about... What are the three things we've just been talking about? Fasting. Your treasures, storing up your treasures. Yes. And, and, the, and the your eye. Your, your eye. eye. Yeah. Okay. Single-eyed single, right. my, uh, single -eyed focus. That's right. Okay. I was thinking. Okay, about if, you know, if your eye is not single, what would it then be? If you, if you were looking over here at the things of the world and looking you'd here, cross-eyed. Uh, you're cross-eyed. But what, another term for it would be if I said that the the proper Hebrew translate or translation of the Greek is to have a single eye. Double vision. Then you have double vision. Mm -hmm. Now, double vision is another problem with eyes. Yes. yes. And if you have double vision, then guess what happens? Double vision will cause everything that you look at to be blurred and unclear. Clear. Yes, that's right. And then the light of the world, not the things of the earth, grow dim to the point of darkness. Yes. Right. How great is that darkness? darkness? Isn't that what this verse said? Yes, mm -hmm. it is. It's yes. Like it if then the light that is in you is in darkness, how great is the darkness? If you have double vision, you will grow dim to the things of God. Your eye will grow dim. You will wind up in darkness. You will not be able to see Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Mm. So all of this now, all of the, what we just looked at now, about fasting, about storing up treasures, 
about having a clear focus on, on the things of God, it's all simply Christ's preparation for the next verses. Mm -hmm. Okay? What I've been saying is it starts with the Beatitudes and it's building and it's explaining and developing each of these. And what are the next verses? It yeah. says, no man can serve two masters. Yeah, right. absolutely. Yeah. All right, now, I don't want to get too deeply into this today in this session because I really do want to spend some time with that. Uh, I, I think we need to devote some, some time to that. But it goes back to the idea, if whatever, whatever you serve is your, is your master. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Jesus Christ said, you are either going to be a slave of righteousness or a slave of sin. Yeah. I think, um, I am not a, I wasn't a great fan of, it's Bob Dylan. Oh, right. Saying a song, you're going to serve somebody. Oh, right, right, right. Because the fact of the matter is, we will. We will all mm -hmm. serve somebody. You will serve, because if you, if you are leading a life that is given over to devotion to serving yourself, mm -hmm. I promise you, you're not serving yourself. You are in bondage to the devil. Right. You are in bondage yeah. to, to, to so many things, but you're in bondage. You will. Now, a bond servant is somebody who voluntarily chooses to serve. That's right. Yes. They've been given their freedom yes. and then have chosen to go yes. back under. And I'm going to tell you, happy is the heart of a true bond servant. That's right. That's yeah. right. Because you're doing what you've chosen to do. Mm -hmm. you, yeah, haven't been, you haven't been dragged off into captivity. Right. Right. Right? Yeah. But you will either serve... No man can serve two masters, right. so you will serve the one and mm -hmm. hate the other. That's right. All right? So this is what we'll get into next time. But it is all about, because Christ came to set you free, to yes, set the captives did. free. This was the first thing he revealed in the synagogue, right? Of, in fulfillment of the prophecies in Isaiah. He came to set the captives free. He came to set us free from the bondage of what we perceive as treasures in the world, because it's bondage. That's right. He came to set us free from our own flesh, because our own flesh is a harsh taskmaster mm -hmm. that will always try and drive every single part of your life yes. and control every part of your life. He came to set you free from from all of these things about you know just looking when you then you can be I was going to say you can be when you when you are free from desires of the world, then you are your own man. Yes. Now, that's a saying that I've heard when I was a young man all the time. But the fact is, you're not your own, because you were purchased with a price. You belong to Jesus Christ. But where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And when you have that, you will truly begin to enjoy and understand what true liberty is. Doesn't he say, come to me, all you who are weary, heavy, weary and heavy laden, and I will and give I'll you rest. rest. His yeah. yoke is easy, and yeah. his burden is light. light. That's exactly right. He wants to, God's desire is to bless us, to set us free from all of the things that take that joy and freedom from us. It says in, in Psalm 37, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. And I have always said that when you begin to delight yourself in the Lord, he becomes the desire of your heart. Yes. And that's so true. True. It's in, in Job, God said, if you take your gold, the gold of Ophir, which was just noted for its wonderfulness, mm -hmm. its purity and everything, and cast it into the dirt. He said, then I will become your gold. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is about one thing and one thing only. The most magnificent love affair that has ever been known. And it's not just that the world is known. Mm -hmm. um, it's that the cosmos has known. Mm -hmm. That the universe mm -hmm. has known. Mm -hmm. That the universe and beyond has known. Because it is about the love affair between Christ and his bride. Yes. The church. That's and nice. nothing should come in between that. Because everything that comes in between that diminishes that love affair. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It gets in the way of that love. And this is what God desires. Is that we have this amazing love affair. There was yeah. a song, you know, I, I don't know. I don't, I've, I don't even heard anybody use this expression in so long. You know, that Alice and I, we had a song. Yes. Mm -hmm. There was this, a song that was special to us mm -hmm. in our early relationship. And believe it or not, it was a, a thing called a theme from Mondo Connie. You ever hear that? Um, I can't recall it. Most people who would know it wouldn't know it by that name yeah. because it's popular name. It became popularized. It was, that was a theme from a wacko movie, yeah. Mondo Connie. But it became popularized as a song called More. Yeah. 
Mm. More than the greatest love, love the world has known. Yeah, this yeah. is love I have for you. The only person, the only person who can sing that is Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. because he's the yeah. only one that had the greatest love that the world yes. has ever yes. ever known. And that love is for you. That love is for me. That love is for us. Yes. And he's not trying to deprive us of anything. anything. Fasting no. is not about depriving you no. of anything. No. You taking that thing that you treasure and storing it up in heaven is not about taking that thing away from you. It's about making it safe. It's about mm -hmm. you know, it, it, being able to fix your eyes on Jesus Christ. It's not about taking you away from what the world has to offer because what the world has to offer is illusion. Yes. It's illusion. Yes. It's smoke and mirrors. You know, how many people have saved up all of their lives and all of a sudden just crumbled into ashes right, right. with this economy? Yes. They saved yeah. to build and buy a house and spend, you know, 30 years paying off a house or, and all of a sudden it's just gone. gone. Uh, they put money in bank accounts and banks have collapsed. I mean, yeah. you know, over That's and over and over. We see it over and over right. and over in the world. But I promise you, and this is what Jesus said when he said, you know, you, you put your treasures anywhere here on earth it's and the gone. thief's going to get to him. The moth's going to get to him. The rust is going to get to him. Mm. But something's going to get to it. And that's an absolute. It is an absolute. Because it's not, it's not safe. It's not secure. Not at, all. not at all. So, again, it's just all about blessing us. How do we get to the place where we can do this? Because when I talk about your flesh and your spirit being in opposition, wait till you try and take something really precious to your flesh and get rid of it. Yeah. <laughs> When your spirit says, you know what, that's not good for my spirit. We were talking about it the other day. Just this sounds like a silly thing, but like television. Yes. Yeah. Now, I, I'm, again, I'm not trying to put a burden on anybody or suggest that mm. this is what God has for you. Yes, it's an addiction. Isn't but it? Yeah. well, it is for a lot of people. Sure. Mm. And so, if if God were to speak to you, or if you chose to fast by fasting from television, television. and saying, you know, yeah. it's I would my time would be far better spent in prayer and in you know. Just mm. just being with the Lord, meditation. whether it's prayer and meditation, time in the Word of God, mm. that that would be so much better for me. So you choose, what, how, see how long it takes for your flesh to, to rile up. Um, or not only, and, and it would be also to, to go out and, and serve somebody, you know, go out and well, do whatever something it is. to somebody else. But you know, I, yeah. I didn't mean this when I mentioned television, I didn't do this on purpose. Mm. Uh, but I speak from experience, yes. because I've got a really stupid experience. Mm. Years ago, I mean really stupid, mm -hmm. uh, years ago... Many, many years. Many, many years ago, back in the 70s, mm. I was at a place where, I mean, I, I devoured the Word of God, but I also sat and I would spend hours in front of the television. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, I'm capable of doing both. I really was able to do a lot of things, you know. So I'd sit there and I'd read my Bible and watch the television, read my Bible and watch the television. And it just dawned on me, this is what's called tickling of the spirit, mm -hmm. <laughs> that the television was not a blessing to me. Right. That it was in the way of my getting yeah. to a deeper and greater knowledge of God. So I said, and it happened to be right around Christmas time. Mm -hmm. I think right. it was 77, somewhere around there. Yeah. Yeah. And I said, I said to the Lord, you know what? January 1st, the television goes out. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start the new year. We're just going to put it in the just trash. Gonna, just going to put it in the trash. Mm -hmm. I meant that. Mm. Gosh, that's when The Odd Couple was on, on television, a series. Mm. I used to like that show, mm. The Odd Couple. So a couple days later, I'm, it, it's probably in December, in the 20s, it's right around Christmas mm. time. And I'm thinking to myself, January 1st. It's right around mm, the corner. Odd Couple. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think I started to get sweats. Mm -hmm. I started to have withdrawal symptoms. Mm. So around January 29th, or, th or December 29th or 30th, right at the end of the year, I really, this is, I was having second thoughts. Mm -hmm. But being the good spiritual person I was, I was going to trick God. Mm -hmm. So I went and I got the, the television Tele guy, TV the TV guy, guy yeah. and I looked and there on January 1st, there was a big television special of Billy Graham mm -hmm. preaching the gospel. So I grabbed that TV guy and I held it up in the air and I said, Lord, look. Look what's on January 1st. Mm -hmm. I can't get rid of the television now. Yeah, i got to watch this. got to watch that. So December 31st, boy, television worked fine. January 1st, I got up and turned on the television. And it went zzz, 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 zzz. Really? Yeah, absolutely. Nothing on it. Nothing. Nothing. 
God held you to your so, promise. Yeah, it says, don't be quick to make a vow to the Lord. That's right. So I sat there in my comfortable easy chair, staring at the television and crying. Mm. Because what a stupid I was. Repenting. What a, what a dummy what I was. what you were doing, yeah. Yeah. You know? To try to... But I'm lucky look. he sent you a sign. Yes, well, oh boy, he sent me a sign. Yes. I mean, so I took that television and threw it in the garbage that day. Right. But it, because he held me to my vow. Yes, he uh, did. And you know what? I pray that he holds me to every vow that I Amen. make. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Because I, my desire is to be yeah. faithful to the Lord. That's right. Yeah. And the fact of the matter is, I, I'm still human, and mm -hmm. I still go through battles, like everybody goes through That's battles. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I am still capable, believe it or not. I know you might find this hard to believe. <laughs> I say that facetiously. I can still do stupid things. Mm. But thank God, even when I'm faithless, he's still faithful. Yes. And when I make mistakes, he's still there with a loving touch yes. to yeah. correct and guide me. Yes. He wants the best for us. Yes, he does. He wants us to have this yeah, deep and abiding relationship with him that brings us the fullness of joy in our lives. And he doesn't want us to struggle. And he doesn't. And I'm going to tell you something. The instruction for that deep abiding life you will find in scriptures. You will find it all through scriptures. Mm -hmm. From Genesis 1 to Revelation 22, it is all God-breathed and it is all profitable. But there is a place that is special, and that place is Matthew chapter 5, chapter 6, and chapter 7, the Sermon on the Mount, mm -hmm. because there is no place that so finely talks and teaches of walking in righteousness, yeah. walking hand in hand with the one who is the lover of your soul, and his name is Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen. Amen. Spend time in it. Mm. Spend time meditating on it. And most importantly, spend time talking to the Lord about the things that you find there. Because you can listen to me and other preachers and pastors and whoever you want all day long, but faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord. You need to hear his voice right. to change your life. Mm -hmm. That's what I have to tell you. So be here again in our next session because we are going to talk about that God and mammon divide. Mm -hmm. We are going to talk about how to be victorious in this. We are going to talk about how to walk in righteousness, to walk in the triumph like Paul did. I walk always in the triumph of Christ Jesus. To walk in the fullness of the life that God has mm -hmm. for you here and to do so in a way that not only do you clearly see that light of the world, but that light of the world goes through and reflects from you so that other people see it, yes. and other people will glorify God because of their seeing Jesus in your life. Mm. So be back with us then, and until then, I just pray that God would speak to you, yes. that God would speak to each and every one of us in a way that would build our faith and make this all more clear, and give us the power of His Spirit to live every word that he's put in his word to instruct us. That he would use you, use your life for the glory of his name. Father, I just pray that in the precious name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Till next time, God bless you. Bye. Bye. Jesus loves you. A lot.